Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making scales for the Hand Tool Rescue Screwdriver. This is a remake of the Perfect Handle Screwdriver. If you haven't seen that, it is an incredibly cool tool. But that being said, let's dive in and have a little bit of fun. This is the kit from Hand Tool Rescue, something I have been wanting for a long time. He finally made the perfect handle screwdriver. And this is a monster, really, really, really cool. And I'm, I'm crazy excited. Now this you can either buy as a finished product with all the handles on, or you can make your own. And in this case, I decided to make my own scales. So I whipped out the 3D printer and uh, printed out a couple scales. I'm really, really happy with how quick and easy that was. And then because everything was of the correct dimension and my printer was set up well, uh, they actually fit in there really nice. A really good tight fit all the way around. Uh, no finishing needed anything. And uh, we have the perfect oh, handled screwdriver. Hand Isn't that exciting? So for those of you who don't know, uh, Hand Tool Rescue just recently released the screwdriver. It is massive and it is so much bigger than it needs to be, but it is absolutely gorgeous and I've been wanting to uh, work with this for a while. So I thought I would uh, make some hand scales for it. No, I'm not going to be using these ones. They're kind of fun. He provides the, uh, the files for these so you can actually um, print out your own if you want the plastic, um, but I'm actually going to be making some wooden ones today. But uh, I kind of like the look of the pink. Maybe I'll keep it. Okay, enough of that silliness out of the way. This was, uh, yeah, uh, it was kind of fun to, to try this out. I wanted to see exactly how accurate these are, um, but uh, it actually came out really, really well. But I want to make them out of wood. Uh, particularly, I want to make them out of live oak because that, sw that swirl from the live oak will look fantastic on this. And yes, he does actually uh, mark all of these so you know uh, the number you got. Uh, this is a chunk of live oak that actually came from Tally Ho. Um, it was a, a couple blocks of that that I brought, ba brought back. And I'm looking forward to using this on a few other projects. I've been making scales and handles for other things out of this, and it's just a gorgeous piece of, of wood. Uh, live oak is an incredibly dense wood, uh, but because it's all twisted grain and knotty, you're always going against the grain, no matter what direction you're going. It's, it's just an incredibly painful wood to work with. But it's incredibly beautiful. It's, it's one of those woods that just it pops and it is so much fun to work with. So first thing we need to do is break this big block down into chunks. Now they should be a little over three quarter inch thick for each of the two scales. Uh, and it comes with the actual designs so you can print them out and put them on there. And I'll be using those here in a minute. Uh, but I'm actually going to cut them out a little larger than that, almost an inch thick, because I want a little leeway to play with. I'm gonna be able to find the, the best grain on each one. And these two are gonna be cut sequentially out of the block so they'll each be next to each other uh, from where they come out of the piece. So either side of the handle will have the next piece so the grain should continue across the handle from one side to the other. This is a large handsaw, um, not a panel saw, although some people would consider it to be a panel saw and a handsaw. And there's a whole other discussion on there, but this is a uh, five PPI handsaw that will make ripping through this very, very quickly. Now my problem is it leaves a lot of rough marks and so we have to come back and plane those off. I want nice flat surfaces that I can get the pattern onto. These flat surfaces will be the inside surface of the, the handle. So the, the marking and design will actually go in towards the, the steel. I want to make sure that these are perfectly flat uh, and take off anywhere I need to so that they will fit into the handle. And uh, just take your time on this. Make sure that you get a good flat surface because this is the reference from everything. These are the patterns that come with the handle so you can print it out and make your own. And you actually trim them to the inside of the line and it should be dead on exact. I was, I was very pleased with how accurate these came out. Um, he printed them exactly to scale. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to apply the patterns with a glue stick onto a block of wood, uh, onto the block of wood, and then we can cut around this. Uh, I like how the glue stick holds on. It does not come loose. It's not the, uh, the super glue and, uh, and, and painter's tape problem because a lot of times the painter's tape will peel off. This will hold on perfectly and it scrapes off very nicely when it's done. I could come at this with a chisel, however, with the wild grain of the live oak, uh, this is something you really need to saw out. Uh, for the, the top curve on this, I'm going to use a turning saw, and I have a couple videos on making these. I think I've made two or three of them now. But for the sides, I want to actually leave the, the rough sawn part close enough to the outside so I can follow the curve even with a straight saw. And it will allow me to then 
um, actually run around that ever so slight curve with this. You'll see here it's a pretty thick chunk on the other side and I'm not able to follow the curve. Uh, so on the next one I actually come through and cut it a little bit closer before doing the final cut. I'll talk about that here in a moment. For the little step down at the end, they're straight cuts, so I need to extend the lines so I can follow those on in and just do them with a back saw. And then I'm left with the majority of this chunk. Now the nice thing about this is you can learn on the first one and then make the second one. And then if you need to, you can make a third one to match because you messed up on the first one. <laughs> um, I didn't do that here, but that's actually something I, I commonly do. So here on the second one, we can follow the same process. I'm going to use the turning saw to follow along the, the butt end of the, the chisel. And then on the first side, it's close enough to the side I can cut down. But on the second side, it's actually not close enough to be able to follow the line. So I'm going to cut down a rough cut. And then I've got this little piece I can come in and I can follow the curve and actually bend it back to follow the curve around. You can see how it's bending away from the saw here. And uh, that way I can actually cut a curve with a straight saw. Now these are roughly cut to shape. We can start doing the actual fitting them to the handle. And the nice thing about the design on this is you really only have to do the heel and toe of this. So I need the rounded end on both ends to go right down to that line. I actually want to make that line on the paper disappear. But I'm actually going to stay a little ways away from it and then check it against the reality of the handle it needs to fit into. So for this, I'm going to be using a fairly fine rasp, uh, and I have a whole video on rasps and how to use them in different types. Uh, and I'll try and leave a link to that down below, as well as links to the, the ones that I use here. Uh, but most of this is going to be with rasp, or in this case, a curved tooth file. And then eventually I'm going to come in with a very, very fine file and give it a really smooth surface. And I want to take it right down to the, the line it should be at with that fine file. But before getting it right down to that line, we actually want to check it in the handle. So I'm going to be staying away from it as long as I can and just, just getting it as close as I can without actually touching that line. Because the closer I can get it, the easier it's going to be the actual checking on the, the handle. And so in this case, I'm just going to tap it into place and I want to make sure that the, the curves look right. But you'll notice once I actually go to file, it kind of indents on the nose. And this lets me know I need to file it right down to that indent. And then we can check it for the fit. And this way you can get a very, very tight fit um, by pushing it in and then letting the, the steel of the handle actually mark where it needs to go in. And then with the other side, we can do the same thing again. Stay away from the line as long as possible and then check it against the steel. This is a card file that allows you to clean out if they ever get uh, too gunked up with metal and they're not cutting as well as they should be, or gunked up with wood. Uh, you can come in with a card file and clean out your files and scrapers and uh, that will allow you to get a nice clean surface so they actually cut a little bit better. So then we can do the same thing on the other side. Tap it down in place and let it mark where it should be. Make sure you stick your finger in the way of the mallet so you crush it. Yep, that's a smart move. <laughs> and then with the mark on the wood, you can go back and file it right down to that mark. Now before we go putting these in place, we need to drill the holes for the pins. So I'm gonna put one half in, drill the hole through that one, and I'm gonna let it blow out the other side because it's a lot, lot larger than it needs, so I don't have to worry about chips coming out. And then we can put the other half on and then drill back through from the first side all the way through. And that way we know our pins have a straight shot to go all the way through the handle. Now before gluing them on, we want to take them off and we want to remove the paper. Uh, that way we get a good clean glue up to the, the main surface of the steel. And this comes off very, very easily with a card scraper. Um, it's one of my, my favorite ways of, of getting paper on that doesn't move and then be able to scrape it off. I'm going to be using uh, some of the Tay Tools 30 minute epoxy. Uh, for this type of application, it is a great um, slow bond epoxy that works phenomenally on this. I want to cake it in good and heavy. I would rather have it squeezing out all over the place because I'm going to be coming back here and filing everything in place. I don't care about squeeze off. Um, it's not going to cause any problems. So put more on here than you need and let it squeeze out and, and fill all the surface. That way you make sure you have a really good bond between them. Um, I did rough up the steel just a little bit, although it has a really nice surface on it from the mill. I just hit it with some uh, sandpaper and it, it made a, a good surface for it to connect with. Same thing with the pens. These come supplied and we can tap those down in. Uh, because these are a little larger, I actually put a flag on my tap to make sure that they go down the right depth. Then I want to make sure the squeeze out doesn't actually glue onto the clamp, so I put some tape on there and then squeeze this down until the, the, the glue squeezes out. Uh, and I put a lot of force on these. 
Now that they have been glued up and they have been long enough to, to set, we can start taking it apart and running it down. My first thought is I'm just going to rasp this down into place with some heavy rasps, um, but it was taking a little bit longer than I wanted to. Um, and I thought, oh, I don't have that far to go, so I dug down to see how far I actually had to go before I hit the pin. And I realized, mm, let's actually take some time and saw this down. Because uh, I made these a lot bigger than they needed to be, so I had the material to work with. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to change the design, if I wanted it to be perfectly round. In the end, I decided to, to go with the, the perfectly round profile. Um, so it's easier to come in and take off a large majority, especially with this live oak. It is so wild and twisted that um, it's... It really needs uh, to, to be taken off with a, with a saw. It, it resists the rasps and files quite a bit. So I came down and basically turned it into a diamond shape, cutting off the corners on each side, getting it roughly to where it was. And that probably saved me a good 30, 40 minutes of rasp work uh, to get it down in. Uh, the whole shaping on this handle was probably about an hour. I probably have uh, somewhere around two and a half to three hours total on this handle in the shop. Uh, from pulling it out of the box to being completely finished. So I'm going to be rasping it until it's close to the shape. I'm still staying away from the steel, but I want to get it roughly to where I want it to be. And I'm going to use a finer and finer and finer rasp until it gets down. And I'm not afraid of hitting the, uh, the, the pins. I want to caress those just a little bit, but I am staying away from the steel on the handle right now. Eventually we're going to get it close and I can start pulling out regular files and those will get me my finished detail and get it right down to the shape I want. And I'm regularly going to be checking it with my hand. Uh, whenever you're shaping something, file away and then check with your hand and then file away and check with your hand and make sure you don't take off too much. But the nice thing is once I get down to files, I don't have to worry about hitting the, the steel so much. It is a, a softened steel. Um, it is, it, they send it to you so you can actually harden the tip. The ones you buy from them are, are hardened. I decided not to do that on this one, though if I get the smaller ones, I may spend the time to do that with that. I'm going to come in with a fairly coarse file and get rid of most of the marks from the rasp. Make sure everything has a clean transition from wood to steel. You want to make sure that you're constantly rolling the file rather than doing it in one place. So the file should always be rolling from one side to the other and then hitting any high point, regularly feeling it and checking it. And then we're going to go to a finer file and a finer file until I get down to this little detail file that really gets it close. Uh, basically, the next step from this file is 400 grit sandpaper. And uh, that's as far as I'm going to take this one is to 400 grit. I, I may, um, and other ones, um, take it up to 1,000 grit, but uh, I, I didn't really need that on this one. I, I kind of like the, the look of the 400 grit. Speaking of which, 400 grit sandpaper. Now, usually I'd use a bow sander here, but I actually just broke mine the day before. Um, I, I, I used it in a way it should not be used. And so i got to make another one of those. That video will probably be coming here soon. But the 400 grit allows you to really work this in and detail back and see if there's any scratches in the steel or any scratches from the files and rasps that you want to get rid of because uh, the, the dust will fill them up and so you can actually come back and file those off and then sand a little bit more and file those off until you get a nice clean surface. So if there's any scratches in it from other things, I can come back in with a file, clean those up, and then hit them one more time with the 400 grit and get it exactly where I want. Now the shape is there, it's nice and smooth, it feels phenomenal on the hand, we can get ready for finish. And this is boiled linseed oil. If you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know that this is my favorite, uh, especially for hand tools because it just feels so good. And with this white oak and live oak, oh my word. Oh yeah, I'm just happy. This is homemade stuff, so it's safe to use on the hands. It is a really, really nice finish that soaks into the wood and really brings out that natural color especially with oaks, uh, the live oak in particular, it is, it's phenomenal. I'll end it with my paste wax. Uh, this is the stuff that I sell on my website and it allows me to polish it down in, leave it for a little bit and then come back and polish off the excess. It fills up any of the cracks and gives you a really nice, clean, smooth surface. Feels phenomenal on the hand and it looks even better. So yeah, there is the screwdriver all done, ready to use. And Oh, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, this one came out exactly the way I want to, and now i got to find a screw to use it on. Hmm. So there you have it, the perfect handle screwdriver. And this is, uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm, I'm loving this thing. I mean, this is, this is so much bigger than anything you'd ever need. 
But one of these days, there's going to be a screw, and I'm going to be like, I've got the screwdriver for it. <laughs> um, this is phenomenal. Now, some of you are going to ask, I didn't harden the tip. Um, I didn't. I might still. There's enough meat here. I'm not going to be harming the, the wood if I want to harden the tip on this. Um, but I really don't have any particular need to do so, so I'm not going to right now. Um, if you do want to ha buy these, um, Hand Tool Rescue is selling them on a site, and you can buy them with the handles already pre-made for it. Or you can be like me and buy the kit and make your own handles. Uh, especially with having the live oak on hand. Uh, yeah, I love how this came out. Just beautiful. I love seeing all the detail in this. So, yes. Thank you. Um, I, when I, as soon as I saw his video coming out with these, finally, I was like, let's jump on it because he's been talking about making these for years. So, finally. <laughs> Maybe he'll uh, soon come out with other sizes and I might have to make handles to match with the uh, normal size screwdrivers that I might use more. But this is a lot of fun. I'll leave a link to his video as well as a link where you can buy them down below. Uh, it's not sponsored or anything. I went out and, I went out and ordered my own. Um, but uh, this is, yeah, just gorgeous. <laughs> and someday I might have a use for it. <laughs> so I hope you like this video. Uh, this was a fun one for me. It was really kind of cool making exact fits to fit the steel from wood. Um, a, a huge, huge pleasure. So uh, thank you for watching and thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel and everyone who's clicked that join button. As well as I want to say is everyone who clicks the like button and subscribe. All that really does help out the channel. So thank you for that. And I do want to say particularly thank you to the patrons on Patreon, everyone scrolling over here on the side. Uh, thank you. Without you, this channel would not exist. So uh, if you'd like to find out more about that, you can click the link down in the description below, or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. Thank you to everyone supporting the channel, and that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what everyone's going to be saying. Is he compensating for something? <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone well with the other one. <laughs>